What's up guys? Welcome to Pamela Horton Stuff. Today we're going to be doing vlog stuff. I want to start this video out by saying thank you guys so much for always being so patient, for being so understanding. Sometimes I kind of like woo, disappear without you really knowing where I am or what's going on and you guys are there for me through and through and I'm so grateful to have that. Uh, bear with me as I walk through one of the toughest videos that I've ever had to make, mostly because I'm very, very, very private about my health and I don't normally share this with people that aren't my super close friends and a lot of my close friends have talked to me and told me that there's a lot that can be learned from my experiences whether it be to share in camaraderie with someone who may experience the same thing or if it helps someone discover that they themselves also have something similar if just one person sees this video and decides to you know go see a doctor or discovers this about themselves and is on the track to being healthier that is worth it to me i'm in this position now where i have an audience and i also need to explain myself to that audience and so i just want to get right to it uh oh my god my heart is racing so fast i'm so nervous I'm in, I'm by myself in my computer room and I'm nervous like I'm about to perform on a stage in front of millions of people. Um, it's just cause I'm putting my health stuff out there and I'm usually very much like, uh, don't tell people about your health stuff. Ugh. I want to open up by saying I have a family history of ovarian cancer, breast cancer, um, colon cancer, and um, probably a history of cancers that I'm not aware of. It was with that family history that my lady doctor decided to have me do some genetic testing. It was mostly for the BRCA gene, or the BRCA1 and 2 genes that more people know about. It's a gene that when you have this mutation, you're predisposed to get breast cancer. I do wanna put a disclaimer out there if anybody's made uncomfortable by the tox of the processes of a female human body. Uh, I'm gonna let you know right now there's going to be some discussion of that so if it makes you uncomfortable please feel free to pause the video and peruse the the glorious amounts of internet videos that are out there that are fully entertaining and then do not discuss lady business. I do have to disclaim I am not a doctor and I am not trying to prescribe or tell you that you have any sort of condition that you might have, I don't know. If anything, I hope this video helps you decide to go to a doctor. If you are experiencing anything similar, I can't diagnose this. I can talk to you about my experiences, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not claiming to be a doctor. I'm just sharing my experiences. I have to say that before anybody tries to say that I told them they had something that they don't have. In March of 2016, I went to my lady doctor and had this test done, which, and genetic testing, most of the time is just a blood draw. They send it off to a lab. They run all kinds of fun genetic tests on your blood to find out if there's any mutations. And she was initially looking for the BRCA gene, and fortunately, that came back negative, and I'm very thankful for that. But unfortunately, it did come back positive for a different type of mutation. I have a mutation in my PMS2 gene, which, Sounds funny because PMS2, PMS, huh. but the PMS2 gene uh, mutation, the type that I have is classified as Lynch syndrome. And I actually pulled out my paperwork right here so that I could have it ready for consultation, consultation, for looking at in any sort of official capacity. I'm being weird right now because I'm super nervous and I'm really uncomfortable about talking about this because I know that this video is going to go out on the internet and this information is going to be out on the internet. That kind of freaks me out and I'm trying not to freak out right now. Anyways, I have a mutation in the PMS2 gene, which is classified in this case as Lynch syndrome, which means I'm genetically predisposed to have a higher risk for colon, ovarian, endometrial, pancreatic, oh wait, hold on, I got gastric, uh, small bowel, u u urinary, pancreatic, hepatobiliary uh, nervous system and sebaceous neoplasms. What that means in that diagnosis itself just means that I have a life of screening ahead of me. It means that I now at the age of 29 have to have yearly colonoscopies and endoscopies and which is where they put a camera down this way and then a camera up this way. So haha <laughs> we, um, but you know, because I'm high risk, I have to do these screenings. I also have to do what they call um, endometrial sweeps, which is where they just kind of like 
they, they get in there and they take out part of the endometrium to test it to see if there's anything going on there because there's also a risk for glandular types of cancer and also a family history of breast cancer. I also have to go do yearly breast MRIs. Blin syndrome, although classified as a type of cancer, is not an active tumor growth type of cancer. It's just a genetic mutation that means I'm predisposed to having cancer. I also have a history, a family history and a personal history of cancer. This puts up a lot of red flags everywhere. So, but I've done a really good job of staying on top of my screening. Um, I, I have been very fortunate to have health insurance that covers a lot of these screenings. About six months ago, I went into my doctor and this is where it gets, we started talking about period stuff. So I apologize, period stuff makes you uncomfortable. For the most part, my entire life I've had fairly irregular periods and that's, that's normal. It's normal to have abnormal periods for me. Um, usually in when they happen and not so much how long. So the length of the period is usually normal, but the time in between periods is so weird. I'm just, I'm used to it at this point. Six months ago, I called up my doctor because I started to have uh, spotting, like uh, a little bit of bleeding every day for a month. And that's abnormal for me. That is really abnormal. And I thought it could be a broad range of anything, but of course, because I knew at that point that I was high risk for endometrial cancer, I thought, we need to get to the doctor about this because this is not normal. And when something's not normal with your body, you can't just go, oh, I hope it gets better. See a doctor about it. So I went to go see the doctor. I had her do an endometrial sweep, which by the way, is one of the most painful things I have ever had done to me. I literally, it was so much pain. I got dizzy, I threw up and I passed out for a little bit, which was really fun. And I have to have this done every year. <laughs> Oh yeah. So we did the endometrial sweep and it came up negative, but just out of curiosity, my doctor said, well, let's do, let's do an ultrasound. And so we did an ultrasound to kind of check and make sure that everything was okay. Uh, we looked at my right ovary, my right ovary looked fine. We looked at my left ovary and my left ovary looked a little inflamed. And my doctor thought that that was because it might have been because of ovulation, which to me in my head seemed kind of weird because I'm on birth control and usually you don't ovulate when you're on birth control, but I mean, there's, it's not 100%. I understand that there's that risk. So she was like, well, let's come back. We'll do another, we'll do another ultrasound just to make sure everything's okay. Um, because it just looked like an inflamed ovary. So cut to Monday, uh, scheduled to have my lady doctor appointment and um, just do a normal lady doctor visit, which if you are a young lady over the age of 16, you should have these once a year, <laughs> especially if you're sexually active. And I'm probably not gonna be able to like, you know, this. I hope this video doesn't get flagged because again, I'm not a doctor. I'm not trying to tell you that you need to do something. Oh God, I already said that I was telling you you need to do something. Oh, sorry, cut to Monday. Uh, Monday the 21st, I had a doctor's appointment um, scheduled early in the morning, right before I was supposed to go on location to shoot a video all week long. So I went to my lady doctor visit on Monday and did the normal well woman's visit and got everything all sorted away. But then we decided to do an ultrasound on that same ovary that had the issue. And we found that um, what we thought was a small growth or cyst had grown exponentially and much larger than it should be, obviously. So she told me that we are going to have to do surgery and to, to remove it. We did ascertain that it is not cysts because there were two little baby cysts right next to it. I'm not in any pain right now. Um, there is some discomfort when I lay down because there's a very large mass taking up space in my abdomen. Um, so tonight in, it is currently 5.50 p.m. on Monday the 28th, I have a, a pre-op MRI, a pre-op pelvic MRI with contrast at 8 p.m. and where, you know, they're gonna find out exactly what's going on, find out if there's blood flow and stuff, just get better imaging so they can see it better. The mass has to come out. I will be having surgery. Um, and because I'm so high risk for ovarian cancer, it's concerning. I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I, I gave myself a couple of days so that I could like, uh, you know, like not, I don't wanna, I don't wanna be sappy. I don't wanna, I wanna, I wanna try to be as informative as I can. Best case scenario, it's nothing. It's a, it's benign mass, get it removed, it's fine. 
but I'm, I try to be prepared for as much as I can, especially because of how high risk I am and my history. So um, it's scary. Uh, uh, it's scary. So if, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <sighs> okay, I wanna take this opportunity to talk to the young men and women who are watching my videos and to have you guys understand that getting old is not just when you get sick. You get sick at all ages. And if something feels wrong to go see a professional about it, to not look it up on WebMD and try to figure out something's going on and like science it out and then wait it out. There are so many friends of mine that I have that are okay with not going to the doctor because they have fears or whatever. Like I've, I've had a long battle already and I'm only 29 and now I'm going into this new event, which I hope is nothing, but you have to be prepared for anything. I hope that in me opening up about this thing that makes me super uncomfortable and I don't like talking about my health stuff, I hope that you guys will realize that the power to be healthy is in your hands. I'm going to try really hard to be more open about my health. If people have questions, I'll try to be as informative as I can. I hope that you guys will continue to be patient with me while I deal because not only is it physically, um, phys physically taxing, but it is also emotionally taxing. And it's really tough. It's been really tough to process. Um, I actually um, was working on a project with Mark and Amy and Tyler and Catherine and Ethan and all this group of great people. And I was supposed to be there until Friday, but I received this news about this mass on Monday and then immediately had to go and film. And it was really hard. And big ups to Mark and Amy and Ethan and Catherine and Tyler for being so patient with me because I was having a hard time. And um, I've been trying to be, you know, positive and I understand that now, right now, I can't do this alone. I've done it alone before and I can't do it alone anymore. If all that comes out of this is that you guys go and, you know, see your doctor or if you have family history to do genetic testing, to just be proactive about your health and be healthy. Don't take me opening up about this lightly because I, I seriously, like I know that there's gonna be a ton of people in my life that are like, I can't believe she made a video because I am super private about this stuff. Super private about this stuff. I will be at PAX. So if you're going to be at PAX, I would love your hugs. I would love your, your time and your attention and to spend time with you guys. Uh, and then also right after I come back from PAX, I will be going to VidCon Australia. Um, and then, cause when I come back is probably when I'm going to be having surgery. Sorry that this video was such a downer. I appreciate you guys being so patient. This is kind of the reason why I haven't been in as many videos or posting as often as I could be. And I hope that you guys will continue to support me and be there for me while I try to do my best. And um, I hope that you know that I love you and I care about you and I want you guys to be healthy too. If you have questions, let me know. Otherwise, <laughs> hit me up on Twitter at PamelaHorton13 and make sure you guys check out all the fun new stuff I'm doing on Toaster Ghost. And um, I will do my very best to be as healthy and happy as I possibly can because you guys matter to me and I wanna be there for you as much as you are for me. So. Thank you. I love you. Okay, love you. Bye.